Hello everyone, I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. The world was saddened to hear of the passing of legendary comedic actress Betty White at the age of 99, just a few weeks shy of her centennial birthday. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will remember Betty White for her work and her love of animals with a Western New Yorker who met her many times. Later, on the Tony Farina Report, we catch up with the mayor of Niagara Falls, New York. But first, let's start with a clip of one of Betty's memorable moments as Sue Ann Nivens, the saucy television cooking show host from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Sue Ann, why do you want to be on our show? You're the happy homemaker. Yes, and the happy homemaker is very unhappy. About what? I have done that show every day since July 1963. You know what that means, Mary? It means I've been smiling for 11 years. I never thought of it that way. I want a job where I don't have to smile. I don't like smiling all the time. It's against my nature. Sue Ann, you're smiling. I am. <laughs> right now? Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't tell anymore. I'm in a rut, Mary. Everything I do is mechanical. I... I just go through the motions. Oh, well, Sue Ann, come on. Everyone feels that way about her job sometimes. But I can't pretend anymore. I... I've cooked it all. <laughs> I've eaten it all. I've cleaned it, trimmed it, and stuffed it. <laughs> well, gee, I can sympathize. Monopoly I... has turned me into a bitter, spiteful person. Oh, I know you haven't noticed, but it has. <laughs> really? And I don't want to be that way, Mary. I want to be a nice person. And with your help, I'm going to be a nice person. And changing jobs is the first step. Well, uh, Sue Ann, that puts me in a sort of an awkward position, see, because I'm going to try out for the job, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I wonder how a, a nice person would react to that news. <clears throat> well, I, I don't a think a nice person wouldn't point out the dubious ethics of an associate producer auditioning for her own show. <laughs> a really nice person wouldn't use phrases like undue influence or conflict of interest or two-bit double-crossing think. Oh, <laughs> now, just a minute, Sue Ann. In the language of the newsroom, that's an allegation. I have no more influence over the audition than anybody else. Mary, dear, in the language of the kitchen, that's a crock. <laughs> in addition to making us laugh, Betty White's other passion was for the care and treatment of animals. One of the friends she made later in life is Western New York's own Jared Miller. Jared is a zoologist and animal expert who's traveled the world as well as a television personality who has appeared on hundreds of national shows, including his own internationally syndicated series, Animal Exploration with Jared Miller, all starting on AM Buffalo. Jared joins us now. Welcome to the big picture. Hi, Penny. Well, thank you so yeah, much for having me today. It's so great well, seeing you again. When I threw that in about starting a on AM Buffalo, mm -hmm. We're so happy that you are a Western New Yorker. We're always so excited to have people here who started got their careers right here in Western New York. So that, that is really important to us. How did you meet Betty White and what is she like? Well, you know, it's amazing. Well, you're, Penny, the, growing up in Western New York, you know, I, you know, obviously I kind of inadvertently got into, into television, but my whole career path is really much like Betty, has been generated by my love, or propelled by my love of animals. And, and meeting Betty White was kind of a uh, very serendipitous situation. I, it, believe it or not, I met her, um, even though we have a lot of mutual friends that work with, within the animal community, uh, I actually met her on the set of The Tonight Show years ago, about uh, in the early 2000s. Um, I started working as a pretty regular guest on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And, and Betty was there. Um, you know, obviously she's just been an icon in television for pretty much anyone who's watching has grown up with Betty White you know it, like we often joke she you know her career started before there was sliced bread you know she's <laughs> been around for forever and and just 
brought so much joy to people for so many years, uh, for decades. But I met her on the set, and, and it was an interesting situation. When I first met Betty, she was participating in some really fun segments for The Tonight Show. Um, oftentimes, you know, in between Jay's monologue and some of the celebrity guests that would come on, there'd always be some kind of fun uh, fun activity or some something going on at The Tonight Show. And so the first time I saw her, she was participating in a thing called Does This Make Betty White Flinch? And Betty White, <laughs> At, at the ripe old age, she, at the time she was probably in her in her late 80s, she w stood behind a, a piece of plexiglass and she had a Olympic archer shoot a, a suction cup arrow oh at the glass to, to see if it would make her <laughs> flinch. And guess what? She didn't flinch. The only time I did see her flinch is when they tried um, Bam Mangera, who's a professional skateboarder. Uh, he went speeding at her on a skateboard and hit the hit the plexiglass right in front of her, inches away, and she flinched just a little bit. <laughs> but for the most part, she's pretty solid, and and that just attributes that are um that Betty is really up for anything. And this was right around that time, right before her, I mean, obviously she's just been an icon with, with Mary Tyler Moore Show and with uh, Golden Girls and, you know, in, in that generation. But then, you know, right before her big resurgence and who would have known like years later, she'd be hosting SNL and become like, again, just reinventing her as, as just a cultural icon. Um, it all kind of started back on that. And then I had the opportunity to, to spend time with her, you know, not only there at The Tonight Show, but, you know, even on my 30th birthday, I got to spend time with her. Uh, I was working on a show for CBS at the time, and we were over at, um, at um, the Fairfax CBS studios in, in West Hollywood. And it's my 30th birthday walk, and a publicist I was with was like, hey, here's Betty, do you wanna, do you wanna say, you know, say hello to, for your birthday? And, oh, and wow. so I got to spend my, my 30th birthday with her. And then since then, just you know, got to know her a little bit better. And of course, the animal stuff really, really bound our relationships. I mean, she, she cares as much for animals than she does for you know, all the people in her life that love her around the world, as well as you know, her television craft. Could you tell if there was a certain animals that she liked better than others or that she cared for more than others and, you know, really had a passion for? She loved everything. So Penny, she was like, I know, and I know you, you, uh, you love, you're a big snake lover, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm, you, I'm crazy about them. You, yeah. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> Most people, but what's so funny is Betty, Not. Betty would be as comfortable with a thousand pound grizzly bear as she would be with a snake. She would hand you a snake and say, feel how just beautiful this animal ah. is. I know, it's <laughs> unbelievable. So she really, she loved yeah. everything, or a cockroach or whatever it'd be. And one of, the, one of the last times I saw Betty was again at The Tonight Show and we did a fun segment called um, Betty's Favorite Animals. And so we, we, at the studio, we actually had, um, we had you know, different animals that came on, but the most iconic thing that we had that day, which Betty just, she just loved, and I saw the, the tears in her eyes, we brought a, a giraffe into the studio oh. and we were able to spend time with the giraffe uh, on American that's television. That's totally amazing. It was I pretty mean, amazing, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, anything that she, Betty wanted, she, uh, she got, so, you know. Well, people, I people guess so, it, yeah. I guess so, right. Yeah. When you were growing up, you, you were aware of who she was, right, because mm -hmm. of these programs that you watch. Oh, absolutely. What was it like when you saw or first met her yeah. and said, oh my gosh, this is the woman that I've been watching all these years on? You know, the Golden Girls. Ex exactly. You know, you know, Penny, it's funny because I kind of grew up with a Betty. So my, my own grandmother, who's, who's still around today, she, she is the Western New York version of Betty White. She's <laughs> as, as sweet, as kind. They actually look very much alike. Um, so I was fortunate enough having an actual grandmother that, that was like having Betty White as your grandmother. So, um, so when I met Betty White, I felt very comfortable. I mean, she was, she's exactly what people remember her on television. She was very, just very sweet, very kind, very sharp, very funny. And even the last time I saw her, she was in her late 90s, and she was as quick and as sharp and funny. And in fact, one of the times I saw her, um, and speaking of my grandparents, um, I was there, and it was it was my grandfather's birthday, and so I had so she called my grandparents' house, who lived here in Boston, New York, at the time, and uh, called them up and wished wished my my grandfather a happy birthday. Talked to my grandmother, and just just one of the sweetest people in the world. It is just so thoughtful. How about you? How did you? How and when did you get interested? as a career and as your life with animals. I'll tell you what, I was born this way. I was born like, I It's in your loved, genes? It's in my genetic. genes. It, I don't know if it's genetic because I think, well, maybe to a certain extent, because my, my family, even though they were very fostering of, of my, my interests with, with animals and stuff, I didn't really come from a family of, of extreme animal lovers, but they, I think they saw it in me. So I was just so fascinated with learning about everything I possibly could. I mean, this, this kind of 
portrays me as nerdy as possible, but no. I spent every lunch period and, 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 and uh, free period in school in the library learning about, I went through every book at my high school library, went to just learn as much as I possibly could about animals and spend hours outside trying to attract deer to come up to me. I would ca catch snakes and frogs and bring them into the house and you know, all those stuff, uh, any normal five-year-old kid would do. When I was a kid, Marlon Perkins from Wild Kingdom and, J and guys like Jack Hanna and all these, these guys were my heroes. So, uh, and I was fortunate enough to kind of get to know them as well later in life. But, you know, I just always wanted to work with animals. I wanted to care for animals. I wanted to not only learn how to make their lives better in captivity, but also I wanted to learn about them in the wild. So, you know, I think just that one drive led me to not only work with some of those remarkable species on the planet, but be able to go and travel and see their habitats where they live. So, you know, I've been fortunate enough that that kind of guided me to end up in the African savanna and the South American rainforest and in, in, in Thailand and, um, you know, all over the world. So. And thanks to appearing on AM Buffalo and working your way up, you ended up on national television. You know, it was so funny, and that's John DeShulo for our mutual friend John DeShulo. You know, yep. when I was 16 years old, you know, I was so into animals, and, and I was doing local school programs and things like that, and, and John, you know, uh, invited me to be on AM Buffalo, and that just, and then since then has, has mentored me, and then eventually, you know, working with Jay for many years, and knowing Rachel Ray for the past 13 years, and working on her TV show. It's really, it's almost like, you know, I think I always want to surround myself with animals, but then what's amazing is, and, and like yourself, Penny, too, I get to surround myself with some of my favorite people, too, all the time, and, and some of the it's, country's it's favorite a perfect, people. It's a perfect life. You obviously um, modeled yourselves in some way uh, or learned from Jack Hanna, who mm -hmm. is, you work with and who is, I guess, one of the most famous associations with television and animals. Absolutely, yeah. So I, I started out when I was in, in my teens. I, one of my favorite shows was Wild Kingdom. And so I, I got to know Jim Fowler, who was the guy that always jumped out of the helicopter onto the, onto, uh, the back of an alligator or something. So I, I met him in my teens. But then very quickly, I got to have a great relationship with Jack Hanna, um, who, you know, just he not only did he build the Columbus Zoo, which is one of the biggest, most popular zoos in the country, but also everyone knows him from his just his Letterman appearances and, and his Saturday morning TV shows and, and you know Jack's Jack's a national treasure as much as Betty White and those two were very 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 close. Oh, they were didn't very they? close. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Well, they were had, best of friends. Yeah, you've had such an exciting life. A little a guy from uh, Boston makes yeah. good. Yeah, is that where you Boston, in Boston, New York too. Bo all places. Oh, right, Boston, New York. Yeah, yeah I've got to be sure every, everyone knows that. Exactly. Okay, so. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jared. Thank Noah, you so much, Penny. For sharing your memories about Betty White and all you do. Thank you so much for all you do for the animal kingdom as well. Thank you. you can find out more about Jared Miller on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be right back.